Okay, um, well, first of all, I, I wish, having heard the, the, the earlier talks, I wish I'd, I'd retitled this now, because actually, I, although I'm going to be talking about video use in, in the masters, it's a distance learning master, and I think that's a key point, and we're using the flipped classroom concept. So, again, these are things which have been talked about earlier on. Um, just a bit of context to begin with. Um, we run, or I run, a, a fully online distance learning master's, uh, in, it's the title, Socialization Evaluation. It's very much a practically orientated course. So it's about practical skills of research design, doing interviews, questionnaires, uh, analyzing data, that kind of stuff. So it's very practical in, in, in its approach. And, and that's what we're kind of testing out by the use of our online approach and, and use of videos. Again, flipped classroom is the, the philosophy behind it. Typically, students will um, do a bit of uh, watching of videos, a bit of reading, something like preparing, some exercise, and then uh, uh, there'll be an hour online webinar each week, thereabouts, when they can practice and discuss and talk about those things. The videos themselves that we use from a variety of sources, uh, some of them made by the teaching team themselves. I mean, I've got quite a lot of videos uh, from my own YouTube channel that I use in, in those sessions. Uh, some done by kind of like, like a lecture capture type approach, but the very much enhanced lecture capture, and I'll show you some pictures in a moment. Uh, some of them talks of colleagues giving that have been videoed, some doing presentations made specially for it in front of a green screen and so on, um, and also quite a lot of use of videos already online, so using YouTube principally. There's lots of material there, particularly on the use of the software that we use in the course, SPSS and in vivo. Uh, why remake it? There's some really good stuff there, and we use that. And, of course, some of the famous names that we're covering, uh, we're using in their videos. Um, well, that's showing better on that screen. On this screen, it's stretched out a lot, but um, here's a few of the uh, uh, screenshots of the videos we're using. Uh, I appear at the bottom left here. Um, but uh, you know, there's colleagues um, you know, doing talks, and, and there's at the bottom right is a green screen presentation. The top right, by the way, is probably my most uh, viewed uh, video on YouTube. It's how to do interviews, 100, sorry, 200,000 views on, on YouTube. It gives you some idea of what kind of audience you can reach if you do that. That's a, an important point I want to make about the production and so on. Partly it's do it yourself. I mean, this is videos um, which people have done themselves, or you know, I've done my own and so on. Others have done similar things. It's good for marketing. You put it onto YouTube. It, it advertises the course and the university and so on. We've also used it, uh, videos made by a production team, using placement students, actually. We're very good at helping staff well enough to, to make the videos and edit them and so on afterwards. So it's quite low cost. Low cost also in the sense that the academics who are doing this are used to writing lectures, used to doing you know, conference presentations and so on. It's what they do already. So that kind of, of, of capture it by video is very simple to organise. We also do a bit of screen capture as well, things like Camtasia for using software. Although, as I say, there's a lot of stuff already on YouTube, so why, why reinvent the wheel? Problems of updating, though, with, uh, with production are that, you know, well, the first is the great advantage of social research methods is it's slow to change. So we don't have to update it that much each year. We can reuse the videos uh, a, a few years running. But eventually we'll, we'll need to replace them. As, um, as Dominic said earlier on, the, the video quality will, will, will show up. Um, and there's other issues like the you know, fashions people are wearing. The Kipper ties, by the way, refers to like, university videos, the early ones that, where the lecturers all had big Kipper ties, and it very soon showed up as old-fashioned later on. And, of course, when we get new teachers, that, that we need to redo the new videos too. Student responses. Um, well, again, as other speakers have said, students tend to watch just before webinars. You can do that through YouTube. Uh, YouTube can actually see when they watch the videos. You can track which site they're coming in from and so on to, to watch that. Um, there's a great deal of continuity. That the, the lecturers that appear in the videos are the same as who run the webinars, and that gives us a sense and a feel of, you know, when you talked about that in the lecture, you're now talking about that in the webinar and so on. And, and generally well received, that approach. And I think others have said this as well, that English, uh, students whose second language is English can, uh, can re-watch and, 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 uh, and redo bits they're having problems with. <coughs> My conclusion, um, well, first of all, this is a low-cost video production approach. Um, it hasn't involved large teams of production, uh, minimal scripting, because it's lecturers doing what they do anyway, writing lectures uh, or, or doing presentations and, and talks and so on. 
I think the flipped classroom approach has worked well, that integration of the video into reading and the webinar discussion on the same kind of topic, just like uh, the, the last talk we had um, uh, at UCL. Um, and I, I think it's, it demonstrates that you can be successful in this kind of distance learning approach to teach a practical skill. And certainly our students report that, that they, there's a good feel that they're learning the practical skills that you would normally be in a classroom to do or in a lab or whatever, things like that to do. So, you know, the integration of video and webinars, I think, is working well in a practical subject. And I think I might have even finished early there, so that's it. Thank you.